Um, and, and we now come to our third speaker, Professor Dean Hislop from Victoria University. Um, he is a professor of econ econometrics at Victoria, and his research interests include labour economics, applied microeconomics, and econometrics. I think that's what you might describe as an empirical researcher in the world of work. Is that a fair description? Um, Professor Hislop has published numerous articles and research papers, and these include the dynamic effects of an earnings subsidy for long-term welfare recipients, and returning to work from injury, longitudinal evidence on employment and earnings, which both sound very interesting, so welcome. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is, is some um, evidence really from a quite an interesting um, social experiment that ran in Canada for 10 years, um, <clears throat> looking at really the, the impact, long-term impact of um, a quite a generous earnings subsidy or earnings supplement um, targeted at long-term welfare recipients. <clears throat> um, and uh, what have we got? Yeah, yeah so this. The, the project was called a, um, the Self-Sufficiency Project, and uh, this ha slide has a, a bit of a summary of, of some of it, but the, it was designed um, in the early 1990s to, to study really whether a generous uh, but temporary um, earnings subsidy, uh, as I say, targeted at long-term welfare recipients. So you can think of it as being uh, their sole parent, so, so the, the closest population in New Zealand would be the DPB, um, long-term DPB beneficiaries. Um, and it was designed to really test a, um, a particular earning subsidy and whether it could um, encourage full-time work um, that would make work pay better than, than, um, than welfare payments. Um, with the hope, really, that um, it would encourage long-term independence and, and self-sufficiency among the, the population. Um, the, the pathways by which it would, was intended to work would be that the the generous subsidy would uh, both encourage and support the long-term uh, recipients um, in the transition from welfare to work in the first instance. And then secondly, um, either through developing the uh, human capital and or skills required for, for ongoing employment um, and or through breaking um, some welfare dependency um, track would, would enable really long-term self-sufficiency or, or independence. Okay. Um, the, there was, a, and, and it was a, a long-term uh, project, so, so it ran actually for about 10 years, from 1992 through to 2002, it wrapped up. Um, it was large scale, so it, it involved actually three experiments um, across a, around about 10,000 participants total, actually, um, based in, in two sites, one around Vancouver in British Columbia, and the second around the city of St. John in, in New Brunswick. Um, <coughs> And as I say, it was a, a randomised um, design social experiment. So, so each of the, uh, the experiments took a, a um, sample of, of targeted welfare recipients and, and randomised them either into the control group who were just exposed to the regular welfare um, uh, system and then a, a treatment or program group who were uh, given the, the, um, the earning subsidy um, offer. Okay, and. And the, the way it worked was, so, so it's quite a generous subsidy. It, it worked um, on the basis of being uh, equal to half the, the difference between some benchmark level earnings, which in, for what it's worth was around about $3,000 in, in Canada when it started. Um, uh, so the difference between that level of, of earnings and um, the actual earnings the recipients got if they took full-time work. Okay. Um, to give you a, a sense as to the the magnitude of it, maybe a, a better example would be uh, for a sole parent with one child, I think typically they'd, they'd be receiving around about $1,000 of, of welfare payments um, monthly. Um, if they were to take a full-time minimum wage job, they'd earn around about $1,000 um, monthly. So there's not any great incentive from a financial perspective to, to move from welfare to work. Um, with the supplement, uh, if that's the type of employment they they'd take, uh, it more or less doubled their earnings. Um, in gross terms, so, so adjusted for tax and, and other things, it was somewhat less, but um, so it was pretty generous. And, and it was temporary, so, so it was um, eligible from the point at which the, 
the recipient started receiving the supplement, they could receive it for the following three years. Okay. Uh, so, so there were up to, you could receive up to around about 36,000 Canadian dollars um, in supplements over the three years if you, if you maximised it. Um, and the other requirement was that the, the people had to leave, um, leave the welfare um, uh, participation environment okay, and, and take full-time work. So full-time work was defined as being, um, I think, a minimum of 35 hours a week for o over a period of a month. Um, um, the program actually had an unusual set of, of um, uh, program rules, okay, which I think, which is the, the two papers that um, I've worked on uh, sort of really study the, the impact of those program rules, which I won't really talk about much today. But um, and the, the the interesting rules had to do with with time limits. So so the the main one was that um, when uh, recipients uh, received the offer, they had a, a year in which they could um, could leave welfare, find full time work, and become essentially entitled. And if they didn't didn't achieve that set of things in the first, in, within a year, then they lost their their future entitlement. Um, uh, and if you're interested, there's a, uh, a website run by the um, Social Research Development Corporation Canada uh, that has uh, a lot of uh, documentation around the, the SSP. Um, so there, there are two main uh, experimental studies. The, the first one I'll refer to as the recipient study, or SSPR, um, and that focused on the, the long-term stock of, um, uh, of solved parents um, and it, it, it operated in the two sites in British Columbia and, and New Brunswick, okay, and took around about 5,600 um, long-term recipients, uh, defined as being, they've been on welfare for at least 12 months, okay, um, and they randomised them into the program group and the control group, okay, um, and the program group was, was given this uh, SSP supplement offer, okay, so that they, they were told if they left welfare and took full-time work within a year, then they'd um, become eligible for this three years' worth of, of um, earning supplements, okay, which they could receive um, in any month during the, the subsequent three-year period in which they were, were working full-time. Um, and the outcomes of, of um, these long-term recipients were, were followed for uh, at least six years um, from the point of, of randomization. The randomization actually took place over a, um, there was about a two and a half year intake period. So. And then the second main experiment was what we call the, uh, the applicants experiment, or SSPA. Um, and that focused on new entrants into, um, into the welfare system. Uh, with the idea of, um, uh, the Can Canadians were actually serious about uh, this as a possible um, uh, long-term policy, actually. And, and the second experiment, the applicants experiment, was designed to sort of test to what extent there would be um, much of a delayed exit behaviour from, from uh, new welfare recipients coming on to welfare, um, or, or new applicants coming on to welfare, okay, who may be incentivised to, to stay on welfare for a year uh, so that they could be, become long-term recipients and then become eligible for the, for the offer. Uh, so that was the, the initial motivation for, for looking at the applicants. Um, so it took around about 3,300 um, new applicants to welfare, and that was defined as being they hadn't been on welfare in the previous six months and operated just in the Vancouver site. Um, uh, and again, the, the program group um, in the SSPA study were, were told at the outset that if they were to stay on welfare for a year um, and hence become long-term recipients, then they'd become eligible to receive this, this uh, subsidy offer. Okay. Um, and the outcomes for the applicants was, were um, followed for at least seven years. Um, there was a third um, smaller study done uh, which took, again, the, a smaller stock of, of long-term uh, recipients and, and randomised them into three groups, actually. The control group, uh, the standard SSP group which received just the subsidy offer, and then a third uh, group which was sort of SSP plus. Um, and that third group received the subsidy offer plus um, some active um, employment uh, services. So, so they sort of had active job search and, and were um, encouraged to join job clubs and, and so forth. 